a 211 of the year of streaming and learning to code. We are continuing on here at Free Code Camp. And we are diving into, I believe, a new section. We have completed the basic JavaScript section, recently the object-oriented and was it functional programming section, and now we get to start chipping away at this much larger section. All of the basic JavaScript stuff was estimated around 10 hours for completion time, object-oriented and functional programming. That section, which we just completed, was two hours, so we're going up against 50 hours supposedly right here again their uh timing is kind of arbitrary and it's definitely on the longer side i do actually think it's accurate if you were compared to the first project section we did which was another 50 hour section it did not take us 50 hours to do those projects however we didn't exactly put in 50 hours of effort. I could see a novice level person going at a novice level speed trying to achieve, um, what do we want to call it, sort of an advanced level product and finish. I, I see that could taking, I could see, oh god, it's already late, it's already midnight, Death, death, death. I could see that taking 50 hours. So uh, we were simply just trying to complete the minimum. I don't know if these are actually project-based, but I get the feeling they're kind of in between the regular stuff here at Free Code Camp and the stuff that we would complete via CodePen. So let's see how this all plays out for us. Shall we begin? Basic algorithm scripting. Get set for our algorithm challenges. Go time. Okay. So, from the top, scratch that. Let's double check what we have so far. Make sure everything is afloat. Mic audio, check. Webcam, golden. Little kitty's MIA. She's probably hunting us. Uh, and we've got chat open. <coughs> Half lung capacity. Mostly normal. Okay, and we're good. So, from the top, day 211. Bonfire meat. Bonfire. Your goal is to fix the failing test. First run all these tests by clicking run test or by pressing control and enter. The failing test is in red. Fix the code so that all the tests pass. Then you can move on to the next bonfire. Make this function return true no matter what. Run test, reset help bug false. Meet bonfire should return a boolean value. Meet bonfire should return true. Uh-huh, uh-huh, what the deuce? Function, meet bonfire argument, console log. You can read this function's argument in the developer's tools. Return false, meet bonfire, you can do this. Our algorithm challenges will teach you how to think like a programmer. Cool. So, let's go on to the next step. Our previous challenges introduced you to programming concepts, but for these algorithm challenges, you need to know how to apply what you've learned to solve open-ended problems. That seems like a good idea. Our algorithm challenges are hard. Some of them may take you several hours to solve. You will get frustrated. That's why we're here. But don't quit. Day 211 is today. Hopefully we will see a day 212. Onwards. When you get stuck, just use the read search, read, search, ask methodology. Don't worry, you've got this. Finish challenge. Were we supposed to do something on the first page? Or like, I feel like that was an actual thing. Nope. Nope, just a photo. 
just a photo. Neat bonfire. Is that the next one? I just don't really understand the purpose of this. Reserve a string. Maybe they're just hinting at what what we will eventually be searching for. Yeah, they're just highlighting what's to come. There's no action needed to take place on this particular item. At least I hope. Don't hurt him, Hammer. Go time. Submit. And go forth. I think? Yeah, that was all. That was all. That was not... That was the... Free code camp environment, not a picture of code pen. We are good. We are here. We didn't need to do anything. That was just a, a nice photo of some foreshadowing of what's to come. So, ta-da! Reverse a string. Reverse the provided string. You may need to turn the string into an array before you can reverse it. Your result may uh your result must be a string remember to use the read search ask if you get stuck write your own code here's some helpful links global string object string dot prototype split array dot prototype reverse and then dot join they took all the fun i mean it's there but i was gonna say we're gonna have to to split it into an array reverse the crap out of it and then dot join it till everyone's stuck together again I'm just trying to think and recall dot split like dot reverse I know we can leave oh can we leave it empty maybe we do need these things we do need these we need all of these because I'm confused <sighs> shocking not that I'm confused but the room for, we'll call it creativity. Little kitty, we just drove, dove into. We can't speak at all tonight. Not that it's been any better the last 210 days. <coughs> <coughs> Disgusting. Little cat, you seem very confused. Can you take a seat on the desk or perhaps the bed? Thank you. Thank you. No, stop scratching yourself on my fingers. That is not what they are there for. Stop following my hand around the room. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look, just go nap on the corner of the bed. No, 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 no. We've only got like 25 minutes to stream tonight, maybe. Look, go backwards, go backwards. Hey, hey, <sighs> go be adorable somewhere else. Don't knock over that water bottle. That water bottle was here first. There you go. Good. Good. Success. So, let's do this. We're going to have dot split, then dot reverse, then dot join. And it's going to be feeding into something. Function, reverse string, return string. Reverse string, hello. Hmm. We don't want it to return string there just yet. Here, they discuss, wow, and they bring us to NDN. They don't even bring us to the free code camp examples. That's impressive. They just go straight to other sources. Kind of cool. How admirable. Um... I totally thought they were just going to keep us within the free code camp environment. Dee 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 dee. See, reverse doesn't have any. It doesn't reference anything in the parentheses. Versus split. Usually, at least when I've seen it, you uh, you end up putting in quotes of sorts. At least that's how I've seen it, but I suppose we could leave it empty. And then for dot join, I thought it was that C like this, how we join it. Okay, 
So we could leave it empty and it would just smash it all together. Those commas are already hmm, a part of the noise or default? No, it's defaulting to commas versus here, join is going to that. We'll piece it together, but basically we get to smash together all three. Shouldn't be too overly difficult. Uh, let's go ahead and do dot split to turn it into an array. Dot split, parentheses, dot reverse, parentheticals, dot join, more parentheses. Hell yeah, all about that parenthesis life. Um, but what do we want to do with the split? I We could leave it empty. It's just every other time I've used split, it's always been double quotes, usually because we're trying to split it with a space. But since we're just trying to break it down per character, I don't know how critical it is to have something in there. We can go ahead and run it. Hey, thrash PVP. What made you choose JavaScript over other languages? Honestly, it's really just the frequency at which I've run into it. Uh, I didn't just go forth and roll out of bed and was like, hey, JavaScript, I choose you instead of Pikachu. I was like, let's, let's learn how to code because our stupid capture card doesn't technically the capture card's great it's a stupid old computer that couldn't handle the new awesome gra uh, capture card but we tackled all of code academy and see this javascript right there in the beginning it's just kind of floating there and then all the other things somewhat javascripty react angular javascript again they had multiple javascript course see we kept running into javascript quite a bit uh at code academy and then same thing with Code Wars. In a majority of the CADAs offered at Code Wars, it seems like a damn near every CADA could be solved via JavaScript. So because I'm going through all these tutorial free sites, over here on the right side, JavaScript, JavaScript. Well, that's Java, but JavaScript, see, like, it's just, it keeps showing up everywhere as, like, a viable option, especially lower levels. So, you know, I just started, so I was doing, level 8 is actually their lowest. So it just seemed like a beginner thing that kept coming up with all the current sort of free learning communities. JavaScript, blah, 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 right, right, and then Free Code Camp came came along so now as we go through i think it will progress beyond javascript i do at least here at free code camp oh why did it never load our stuff it has our username but always have to go in here anywho uh so and the map stuff we're just going down there their little merry path starts out with html and css like most places again a whole sack of Java goodness. Well, JavaScripty goodness. But yeah, now we're just going through that um, time. So, onwards. Uh, thrash PVP, I see. Are you planning on moving on to a different language? Of course, we started off the smattering of different languages. This is a smorgasbord of everything we've tasted so far. From HTML and CSS, JavaScript, SAS, um git python jquery react angular ruby java sql php um yeah so it's it's been good it's been good i've been focused at least at code wars on trying to since i started at code academy and tasted the i don't know what 9 10 12 14 different languages they had to offer because uh, I went through all of their free uh, courses, it was recommended that I pick a language and focus on one. So since JavaScript can be used for basically any and all CADAs at Code Wars, their activities, I uh, I just kind of stuck with JavaScript. So And now we're sort of in the thick of it as it kicks off and starts to ramp up here at Free Code Camp, it looks like. 
there's going to be a lot of JavaScript in our future here at Free Code Camp, but I, I, I'm definitely down to trying something else. Thrash PvP, why not try C++? I am downsies to try C++ Thrash. Uh, the issue that I've come across now, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of uh, free C++ course, maybe? Website, learn. I've never actually Googled this exact phrase. This is the closest I come to being like, I need to find C++ for free as a free resource. Everything else I've done, like Free Code Camp, they do have paid stuff, but I've been using all the free resources. Same with Code Wars. They've got some paid abilities, if you will that I'm not currently taking advantage of. I think even free code, well, no, thus free code camp, of course it's free, but you get the picture. Uh, so I haven't really been going out of my way to find C++ specific things for free, as a free resource. Hey, Education X, that would be cool. I would be into that. But yeah, so it'll come eventually. But I finished the Code Academy course or path, if you will. I'd like to finish the free code camp path, but who knows. Uh, Thrash PvP. A single language takes years to decades to become a proper expert at. Ew. Oh, wait, and I skipped, uh, skipped a language. Thrash PvP. Okay, well, I definitely agree that you should stick to one language. A single language takes years to decades to become a proper expert at. Totally agree. What is it? Uh, 10,000 hours? I think that's like a full-time job for like 10 years or something like that. Uh, five years? Five years. Four years. I forget, but I, I think general sort of rule of thumb for becoming a master of something is, I think, 10,000 hours. Uh, so yeah, that's good times. Now, C++ Primer, a book, is a great C++ resource, and it has practice that is very helpful. Ah, c++.com, doc tutorials, and tutorialspoint.com, C++. Let's click on those. This was the, the first link. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. See, see, look at this. D, 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 D. This was just so everyone can relish in the glory of Thrash PvP and his marvelous suggestions for finding a handy C++ site. We've got C++.com. And what is the other link we should be checking out? D, 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 D. Uh, tutorials, points. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. So, anyone else looking or on the same part of the journey of learning to code should probably check those out for C++ as well. That 10,000 hours is a bit too rough. You can do majority of the tasks you want to do with as little as a couple of months into learning the language. Ah, yes, no, no, no I was talking about, you know, master level expert stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Um, although it looks like you've clarified further. Uh, so 10,000 hours, bit too rough. You can do majority of the tasks you want to do with as little as a couple months into learning the language. The only thing is that you will constantly improve and also increase your knowledge base over time, which is why I say proper expert, uh, not C++ programmer. Gotcha. By proper expert, I mainly mean to be someone like Kate Gregory, who has decades worth of experience at C++ and pretty much knows everything about the language, all the nuances and such. Noted. Good. Good to know. Uh, don't mind me. I jumped into OBS. I need to jump out of OBS, back into Free Code Camp. Let's close out of those, some of the example things. So yeah, we've been kind of meandering through all of these free tutorial resources sites uh, for the last, what is it, 211 days? We've definitely seen some repeat stuff. We've learned how functions work. I've seen dot split and reverse a handful of times, but starting at square one on a couple different res um, 
a couple different, I guess we'll call them tutorial sites, we keep essentially hitting that reset button, which is still okay and fine by me. I've got no issue with going over the basics more than once to really hammer in the fundamentals. There's nothing wrong with a solid foundation. So, uh, and it's good because at least I like seeing the different perspectives on sort of the same topics, how they teach a specific thing, their viewpoint, implementing dot .split, dot .reverse, dot .join. I mean, it's the same thing, and obviously these behave the same way, but really just the instructions in the course. Uh, free code camp compared to code academy versus compared to the challenges on code wars they just kind of throw you into the fire um left to your own devices to survive so it's been good it's been interesting i've enjoyed it but uh yeah so that's that's currently where we are on our immediate journey but it's subject to change at any point what are we doing now we are reversing said string and trying to make the larger extent we can in what little time we have to string we probably still have like 15 to 10 minutes but that is okay the goal is to stream or a day and make some form of progress uh reverse pri reverse the provided string you may need to turn the string into an array before you can reverse it you i wonder if we need to split these up turn one into a variable I think not. Let's just run this. Hope for the best. They're super pissed. They did not like it at all. Uh, let's do this in baby steps, shall we? Return string dot split. No, no, not return string dot split. Let's get. Let's destroy all of this. This whole line looks dumb. Let's reset the code. You know what? No, not reset the code. There we go. There we go. Let's put in some quotes first. Now we'll try. Ta-da! Look at that. It can be executed one at a time. How? freaking awesome uh we're gonna pump you up hopefully that is true submit and go forth factorialize a number return a factorial of the provided integer if the integer is represented with the letter n a factorial is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n factorials are often represented with shorthand notation n exclamation for example 5 exclamation equals 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, 120. Remember to use read, search, ask. If you get stuck, write your own code. Here are some helpful examples. Arithmetic operators. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the deuce? What is happening? Return the factorial of the provide integer. So if we're throwing in a 5... It should be doing this. Is this just like agreed upon by the community that the exclamation does that? Or is that actual code like a method or a syntax thing? Is a number followed? Is a number followed by an exclamation point actually going to factorialize the number for me? I don't think it is. Don't mind me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Typical. Typical. Confusion sets in. Uh, beat dee 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 Thrash PVP. JavaScript was my first language, actually. I left it after the one course I took on it in school because I couldn't do a lot of stuff I wanted to do, e.g. making a driver. Uh, could use a for loop. Exclamation is a math symbol. It's the factorial symbol. Ooh, Wikipedia. Dude, Thrash, you are on point with the links for resources. Look at that. Okay, so selected members of the... Let's see, here, look, let's all... 
revel in the glory of thrash yet again. Ta-da, Wikipedia, factorially goodness. Okay, so, selected members of the factorial sequence, blah, 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 values specified in science notation are rounded to the displayed precision. Blankety, 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 blank. Yes, good, good, beautiful, beautiful. In mathematics, the factorial of non-negative integers, n law, is the product of all... Okay, so if I drop in a number with an exclamation point, this thing's going to birth a factorialized product. I find that fascinating. Can I do this? That feels wrong. Yeah, they don't like that syntax. Neither do I. We're going to do it anyways. Okay, good, good. It's it's uh, frustrated at us. That's hot. Um, if I were less sucky, what would I do? Pull it together, Stephen. Let's let's gander at these. Close those dudes out. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes, yes. Basic arithmetic operators. Who wants to bet they don't cover factorial on this page? Although it is MDN. I could be wrong, but I'm not. Fascinating. Uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, we could go. Hmm. Typical. X plus plus. Increment up by one? No, 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 no. That's crazy talk. That's crazy talk. I think it should be fine with the factorial. Somehow, something will work. Let's do variable three equals three. Explanation and you know what? I don't think that's gonna fly. That's not gonna fly. I wanted to do this, but that's not correct at all. Okay. Something, blah, 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 blah. Fresh. Ah, just do a for loop. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Time to get 40. For uh, variable i equals 0. i less than... <laughs> Wait a tick. But if num... Thrash, I don't think I'm clever enough to do this. Num.length, that's not going to help. I mean, I know it should help me, but you have to realize is I've hit the reset button, like... I'd say a minimum of 35 times over the last... 120 days juggling the multiple sites on any given language or activity. I'm really only about two and a half weeks in, even for the deepest issue. It's it's a compounded two weeks of understanding, but it's still limited after 220 days. It's weird. It's a blessing and a curse, this year of streaming and learning program across the handful of sites that I've done because it's covered so many different languages and then it bounces around like the last two days I've been at Code Wars so there was a two day gap between the uh, going over the methods, the functional programming stuff now utilizing, they mentioned I think it went over before what's it called not important not important. Focus on the thing. What's going down? Uh, thrash. Make a variable temp equals number. Okay, okay. I can be that guy. I can be that guy. 
uh, with the function I take it before the for loop variable temp equals num mm -hmm, mm -hmm. should I do temp dot length is that wrong is that weird and then I plus plus Ah, yeah, see, that's weird. My bad. Because every time, because, sounds ridiculous, for the last 211 days, the only time I've been doing for loops is something regarding a for loop where dot length is used for whatever I'm trying to search. It just, it's, it's a long-term monkey see, monkey do experiment. It's not pretty. We are just, we are floating, Thrash. We have been floating for the last 211 days. It's been brutal. Every day is hell. It's been fun. But it's been hell. Okay. Uh, so. Something about temp. And uh, for every nickel I have, let's try. So if I were to factorialize... Can I factorialize temp? I think everything's broken. I think I'm the issue. I know I'm the issue. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Copy. Good, good, good. Let's do this. Recursion. They didn't cover recursion in Code Academy. BS. Did they really? There's a whole other tangent. Oh my god, they do, or did, or do. This is new. They updated stuff. Hold the phone. Factorial n if blah 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 equals zero return. Is it recursion n factorial n minus 1? Fascinating. That could work. We're going to look at other stuff. Could work. Also, this means we should go back to looking at the Code Academy courses because it looks like they've updated stuff. Interessante. Uh, aside from that, so we were looking at Stack Overflow. Uh huh. Uh huh. For loop. Ah, the my max. So this is like temp. This is where Thrash was guiding us. Hey, look at this! I'm taking a, the free code camp course. One of the exercises is to create a factorialized function. I know there's several ways to, I'm just not sure why this one keeps returning five. So maybe we don't want to follow this particular example, but it seems like they're on a far closer path than we were at this point. Uh, function factorialize num my max number. My counter is one. My total equals zero. I zero. I greater than or equal to my max. I plus plus. Number equals my counter times my counter plus one. Very similar to what we have here in free code camp. Their function and their return statement. Good to know. So that's somewhat promising. Uh, then return number. So we're going to have some variables, some for loop going on. 
and bring that back. We'd want you to complete this challenge, else what's the point? Yes, of course they want them to complete it. But the issue is that I'm awful and we are looking for resources, more of a better understanding of why and how. This is a recursive solution for your problem. If number is less than or equal to 1, return the number. Else, number times factorialize number minus 1. Hmm. All right, Thrash, hmm, I really don't want to give you the answer and you shouldn't look at the solution. That's, that is a good point. I feel like I'm, I, uh, let's see, how do we highlight the issue being me the best way? Even looking at this, I still don't get it. Off the bat, quickly. Further re reading and analyzing all of that, yes, I can see it. I can see how this works, but because it hasn't fully clicked that light bulb yet, that's why I haven't copied and pasted it into, not that copying and pasting is good, but I haven't implemented that exact solution for my answer yet. We're still struggling. 211 days later. It's been painful. Uh, but the general idea, I can see how that would work in general. So this is what we're going to be returning eventually. Return number. So I guess working backwards, number will need to e uh, equal something. Number needs to equal that variable which we were going to go with temp and it seems there's two ways we could go about this well not two but of the two examples we saw the stack overflow versus the uh, code academy version on how we can set up the variables and implement stuff from there i kind of want to fuse the two together so temp times I don't think we actually have was it temp minus one? But that just feels weird. That seems wrong in my head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We've got temp minus one. That's not going to solve anyone's problems. Something about this is wrong, especially since we're working from the ground up. Or from, not, not from the top down. Again, the common theme and what's wrong with all of this is me. So hopefully we can fix that eventually. Hmm. Uh, Thrash PVP, do you want a quick, non-recursive solution? I'm going to hold off. However, you are more than welcome to submit or suggest, enter, add in your solution. It's just usually I'll try to hold off on implementing it until I have a better understanding of it. Whether that's through you further explaining the solution, that would be cool, or me kind of piecing what you have to offer in with what I currently have, uh, then getting sad and then just using your answer. Uh, so that's usually how that, that story plays out. Um, but there is a, a good attempt to at least understand it at first. Yeah, yeah, good. But I think we're getting close with this, though, I'm just trying to wrap my head around the fact, oh, it's the function. That's where it's coming from. Okay. So wait, hold the phone. How is, how are they taking factorial, the function, 
here's factorial of function n, but they're doing n minus 1, can you do that? This makes me concerned, because it's been 211 days, we've seen a couple functions since we've started our journey, but usually when there's multiple parameters, it would be stuff like this, you know, a comma involved. So rarely, actually this is the first time where I've seen the the parameter and then a whole new thing dropped in there. This guy, like it's no issue at all. I mean, it makes somewhat sense. I can see this. I, I understand what it does, but it still seems odd to me. So what makes me hesitant to use it? I know it'll work, but it just, it feels weird. Super strange. Um, okay, so, thrash, PVP. Integer factorialize, integer number, for integer i equals number minus 1, i is greater than 0, and we're going to continue to decrement i one by one, i minus minus. So from there, in the curly braces, number, number equals i times i, return number. This is in C++, but you can easily just pour it in JS very quickly. Yeah, I could, I could see that. That's good to know that's C++ because it seems freakishly familiar and easy to read. Uh, compared to JavaScript, so that's cool. Test buck with recursion, the whole concept is that it's able to call the function itself. Is that what's going down with recursion option? Because that, that clears up a lot of my confusion. Uh, with recursion, the whole concept is that it is able to call the function itself. Okay, so that's kind of cool. I think I want to stick with the recursion option so it's calling the function itself that's fascinating i know this is a basic activity i'm still just getting used to the i have i've had my training wheels for the last 211 days and i'm going to have my training wheels for the next god knows how many days at this rate but that's fine by me that is fine. We are here to fall on our face. It is part of the journey. It is part of the journey. The important thing is that we don't stop. Uh, test buck. The example from Code Academy is nice. Recursion in the beginning can be hard. Yeah, uh, honestly, this... I don't remember them co uh, covering factorials, and I did all of Code Academy initially. That was the first 150-ish plus days of my journey. I went through all of the free content that they had to offer. Uh, there are a couple different JavaScript courses, and uh, a lot of courses involve multiple languages. Like, making a website uses HTML, CSS, and JavaScript all combined, so there's a, a bit of stuff going on in there that one but anywho so but uh this summer during this period even um code academy has been updating their site so this seems like a new section because i don't have anything checked off here so it's good to see they've added new stuff like this factorial example uh good good time so test book recursion in the beginning can be hard that's also comforting Let's go ahead and piece this together bit by bit, though. I do kind of want to try what they have to offer. Function factorial n. If n equals 0, that's true, return a 1. We don't want to return a 1. So if that's 10, if 10 is equal to 0, well, that's just weird. Uh, 
on. On the good stuff, begin understanding recursion. Class example, factorial. If you remember the math class, factorial number, multiply, between itself, one, blah, blah, blah. Good in programming. Recursive function. Same thing. At the end of the code, just call it. So all they want is factorial 10 to solve their problem. That will solve their mystery. How does that actually work? So 10 comes in here. If 10 equals 0, which it's not, so it's not going to return 1. So then it's going to return 10. times that by factorial 10 minus 1, which would be 9 overall. And then so forth and so forth and so forth and downwards until it gets to 1. No, until it gets to 0. When it gets to 0, it's going to return a 1. That, no, I'm, I'm confusing myself. All of this is awful. I'm terrible. You need, oh, you need to return one. Aha, test, uh, test bot clears up our confusion. You need to return one if you do n equals zero because you can't have zero. The factorial of one is always one. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so that is our safety net that we're looking at. Not gonna lie, after seeing recursion, Seems easy and makes sense. I was hoping that it would simply be adding the exclamation, but now I'm kind of liking Thrash's solution because I can see all the numbers trickling together. I think we might go with uh, Thrash's recommendation. Plus, we've already got the for loop. Who doesn't love for loops? Except for when they're confusing you. So, factorialize, d d d d d d d integer, factorialize. So we've got function factorialize, number, for variable i equals, we should do number minus 1. Can we do number minus one? Number minus one. I is greater than zero. I think I'm going to need to doctor this a bit. Zero something, i greater than zero, followed by i minus minus. Recursion is clever, but I feel like this is a better visualization of what's actually occurring, step by step, something I can grab onto and point to, instead of just the awesome black magic that is recursion, you know? Uh, thrash PVP. Well, the easier solution is my personal suggestion when learning. Aha! Exactly. Uh, to be honest, unless you're trying to be creative, uh, or unless you're trying to create obtuse code, or there is an inherently poor reason for doing the lazy method, it's better to write the easier one. I, I like that. Also beneficial to learning. Step by step. Which is definitely what I need. hammering out the basics. So we had, do we keep our temp variable? I kind of feel like we do. Initialize, factorialize, integer number. For integer number, blankety blank, number equals, you know what, maybe we don't need that guy. Maybe we don't need that guy. It doesn't look like we do. Four. 
for blankety blank number uh, thrash PvP. You don't need temp for this way. Way cool. So here we've got number stuff. D d d d d d d d d d d d d d d. Uh, this is another way to do it in which you would need temp. Yeah, that seems awful. I mean, I can, I can kind of see and follow what's going down there, but that makes my soul feel itchy, and I'd prefer it not feel that way. So the, your first recommendation, that's, that's where we're at. That is definitely more our speed. Uh, num equals number times i. Look at that. Look at that. Ta-da! Be da dee 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 Right? Now, furthermore, such and such, this seems just about right. I think I can live with that. Fingers crossed, we don't light the whole city on fire. Let's run this. Aha! Look at that! 120! Very cool. What's going down with the last one, though? Factorialize zero should return one. There's an 83% chance that I did something wrong. Is it the space? I should give some space between there for breathing. Hmm. Is it the fact? No, no. I was going to say, would it need to be setting number equal to zero, but that's definitely not the issue. Something about factorialize. It liked everything else. Should return a number, return 120, return that for 10, return dear god for 20. Is that really factorializing? Escalates needlessly quick should return one why would it return one we drop in zero i is zero minus one. Oh, it can't be negative i think that's the issue zero minus one zero negative one is greater than zero so that's not gonna fly and then I minus minus, that's not going to work. So then we've got some weird 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 1. Yeah, yeah, it gets, it gets ugly quick. So I, yeah, and that just, it falls flat on its face. So I need to implement something where, uh, don't mind me, don't mind me. We will figure out to not have it be 0. We can change it. What if I just raise this to one? Is that bad? That ruins everything, doesn't it? I don't know if it does. I'm going to try it anyways. Damn, but it still works. We still get the same result. I was hopeful. That was some wishful thinking on my part. Not going to lie. Okay. Bad Steven. Bad Steven. Uh, let's look at the stack overflow stuff, because that was... <laughs> See this? I was going to say, and that might be the right issue, or the right answer, but I had mentioned before, did I need to set number... Uh, not number, uh the variable number equal to zero oh god zero that's been a thing that i've seen in some activities but you hey no 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 tiny one uh usually that's for other issues other variables in this case we don't want num to always equal zero that would totally defeat the purpose of factorializing so not setting it to zero but if we look here this is the, so this is a recursive solution. Blankety blank, less than, little kitty, we, I love you. You're covered in fur and you're adorable, but I'm in the midst of trying to solve this nightmare. 
You're so cute. Be free, little one. Be free. No, 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 no. Look, go be covered in fur. Thank you. Uh, this guy right here. C and T. Count. Count is one. So how are they doing? Count times I return count. Hmm. Let's give that a shot. But we're going to call him Temp because we can. In honor of Thrash and his suggestion, we're going to do Temp equals 1. And blankety blank num. Yeah, good times, good times. Temp times equals I return temp. Temp times equals I. I don't know if that's actually going to work. We might need to do even more doctoring, but wishful thinking on my part goes a long way. Damn, we got the one part. We got the one. Death. Death. I e look at the Oh my god, was it setting it to one in the beginning? I totally okay. We did it just a moment ago. We set this to one, but apparently that's not needed. It was setting this guy to one. But I didn't think of that. We'll set that to zero. Let's try doing one here. Ah, but with doing it as one, it's less than or equal to for num still. Not dot length, just num. And then they're doing I++. Gotcha. Alright, so. Less than or equal to. Num. With I++. Hopefully. This puts out all the flames surrounding the city. We walk away victorious. Thank God, because that was brutal. One for the Guinness books. Submit and onwards to the next challenge. I don't know if we're actually going to get through this one. All of these challenges are turning into... Quite the nightmare. We only made it through two of them, but we far exceeded our initial 20 minute of streaming. It's been like an hour, and it was brutal, and everything hurts. So I think we're actually going to throw in the towel now. This, this hurt everywhere. Tomorrow, what do we have on the horizon, though? Check for palindromes. Return true if the given string is a palindrome. Otherwise, return false. Palindrome is a word or sentence that's spelled the same way, both forward and backwards, ignoring punctu punctuation, case, and spelling. Okay. This is somewhat similar to one of the Kedas we completed at Code Wars just the other day or two ago. So hopefully that will come in handy when we go to tackle this issue. I think tomorrow, unless we end up at Code Wars. Hopefully, we can find time to do both. Uh, in the meantime, though, let's go ahead and back out of this noise. Thank you again to anyone and everyone who stopped by to view the stream and or participate in trying to assist with us further understand and or complete said tasks. Uh, today, it was Thrash PvP with helpful, temp, uh, helpful tips and links. And TestBuck also helped us further understand some of the issues we faced. But in the meantime, we are backing out, I'd like to note, 234 items now completed here at F Code Camp. Eh, eh, it's fun because it goes 2, 3, 4. It's consecutive. That's the high point. That's as great. That's the shining moment 
of this stream. Nothing gets more fun than consecutive numbers. Yay, right? Disappointing. We've had to lower our standards of cool and fun substantially over the last 211 days. But not to worry, we will continue on. Let's jump out of free code camp. Uh, we will be continuing tomorrow, day 212 of the year of streaming learning code. But in the meantime, we are stopping the stream. Thank you again to everyone and everyone who stopped by. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. Are you sure you want to stop the stream? Hell yeah. Kill it!